distances because then the angles would be off and they would never get to where they want to go. So just, this is just so you know, you cannot map a sphere onto a sheet of paper without giving up one of those two. Well, yeah. All right. Now, I was, I was almost done here, but I actually wanted you to draw the triangle that has these vertices. We're going to draw a three-dimensional triangle. Well, just connect the three points, right? I'll even shade it in. That's like a little triangle that's like floating around in three-dimensional space, isn't it? You all see it? Did anybody have any trouble graphing those points or that little triangle? We're all good? <coughs> because of the overlapping points, are the triangles going to have to change their axes? So Your viewpoint? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to do, though. That's why the computer animation is so good in a class like this, because if I show something in class and you can't really see it, I can rotate a little bit so it becomes a little more obvious. If I keep trying to draw these things on the board, it can just look like a jumbled mess. And that's why it's good to have the right hand rule. If you change the perspective, you can change the shape. That's right. That's right. The right hand rule makes everything stay the same no matter what. All right, good. Um, Let's, let's look at this now. <coughs> you don't have to draw on that anymore, but let's look at that solution x equals 2 that I started with. So this means that it's an ordered triple. I forgot to tell you it's called an ordered triple, not an order, ordered pair. You have 2, and then could, can't the y be anything? So I'm just going to put y, and then here the z can be anything. These, these two are free now, right? So you need to draw me all the points that have an x of 2. What does that look like? It's going to be a plane, a sheet, a flat sheet. All right, so let me try and, well, let me put it in here. I can have the computer do it. And let me change the value here to 2. All right, so again, this, this is hard to see, but let me, let me rotate this around. Can you see that? Okay, so any point that I pick here on that sheet, I think I'll, I'll push it around. I, I like to see the little gap in there. Any point I pick on here, to get to that point, no matter where it is, I have to go out on x2, right? Then as far as, you know, moving left and right, up and down, it doesn't matter, as long as my x is 2. So what I get is this flat sheet, or a plane. Now, this plane is parallel to what? Well, what do we call that? It's Yeah, what is it parallel to? Some of you are saying it. I hear it. But let me, let me get back to zero here. Okay, how about this plane right here? Okay, I'm trying to rotate around so you can really see it. Okay. Keep in mind where the x and the y are. Okay, so <clears throat> if it's x is equal to 2, then it's parallel to the yz plane. If it's on the x-axis, then it's on the Yes, we call this plane, the one that passes through the y-axis and the z-axis, we call it the yz plane. All right? This is called the yz plane. And if you have an equation, x equals 2, that's also a plane, isn't it? It's parallel to this sheet. So it's really just taking that sheet and moving it out towards us two units in this picture, right? So you'll say it's parallel to the, to the, to the yz plane. Yep, it's a transformation. It's just a shifting of it. That's all it is. All right? In fact, this plane right here, which I just called the yz plane, what is its equation? x equals 0. x equals 0 is the yz plane. Now, what, is, what are some other planes that we might have here that would be useful? We could have the xy plane which would be kind of like the ground, wouldn't it? I'll put it up there. 
Here's the, here's the XY plane, the ground. And then the XZ plane, which would be that one. Now let's see if that, can you all kind of make sense of what's going on here? Okay. Now, this picture here, we have the worst board in the building, I believe, with that stupid dot. This board, or this picture right here, this room, this corner of the room, is part of that picture, isn't it? We have part of the what plane here? Y. Y. YZ plane here. We have XZ plane here. And I'm standing on X, XY plane. XY is down here on the ground. YZ. XZ plane, right? We're kind of in this front little, front little corner piece right here. Yeah, which 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 is exactly what what I'm trying to lead us into. By having those three planes, we naturally split up three-dimensional space into eight sections, which we call the octants. So with two-dimensional space, remember we had quadrant one, quadrant two. Right now, in three-dimensional space, we have eight octants, and so that's what we want to talk about. Just make sure we know where they are. Here's octant one. Anything in that first little space right there. All your x, all your x values have to be positive. All your y values have to be positive. All your z values have to be po positive. Any point that lives with a positive, here's the ordered triple. If this is positive, positive, and positive, you are in the first octant. So imagine this, this cube just keeps coming out, right? Now, what about being in the second octant? Yeah, it's back here. I'm going to rotate around so you can see it. Jeez thing is freaking out. I lost it. Bring it in there. Okay. There it is. Boy, that picture looks terrible. I'll try to make this a little bigger. So there it is. So what is it? This is octant one. Octant two? Negative, positive, positive. And then the next one is going to be behind that one. So negative, negative, positive. Make this one real big. There it is. Can you all see them pretty good like that? You get the idea? I don't need to go through all eight, right? So we have naturally eight octants in three-dimensional space. Now, for the fourth octant? Is below the first one. It's below the first one. Yep, so, so just take the, here's, here's octant one, two, three, and the back side would be four, right? Sorry, I'm sorry, you meant five. Fifth. Fifth, yes. So I answered positive, incorrectly. Positive, negative. This right here, this is one. Five would be below it. It would be positive, positive, negative. And then negative, positive, negative would be the one below this one. Negative, negative, negative would be the one below this one. These notes, these interactive notes, you can, it'll show all the details for that. Okay, I'm moving along. Examples of surfaces in three-dimensional space. So we kind of already did this. I showed you these, these planes. Right? We have these different planes that you can have. Those are all, those are all surfaces in three-dimensional space. But they're very boring. It's kind of like a horizontal line or a vertical line in, in two-dimensional space. Right? Just flat. Who cares? We're interested in more complicated surfaces. So one of the first surfaces that we want to talk about, um, well, we get to, so we're going to talk about a sphere. But how about, first of all, coming up with a formula for the distance between two points? 
We know the distance between two points in two-dimensional space, right? Let's see if we can remember how we get that. If you're in R2, and you have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, I think we might, I mean, we have a plan for an active shooter. I'm not sure if we have a plan for like an alien invasion. What is that sound? Does it sound like a mothership or something like that? No? Y'all hear that, right? Yes. Okay. All right, so if we have two points in two dimensional space, what's the distance between them? Square root of? X. Yeah, yeah, where did that formula come from? Pythagorean, right? So all we did was we construct a right triangle like this, right? And then we say, all right, well, if this is x2, y2, this is x1, y1, then the distance between here and here is the difference between the y coordinates, isn't it? You could say y2 minus y1. And the distance from here to here would be the difference in the x coordinates, right? And so if we call this right here d, Pythagorean, Pythagorean's theorem would say that this side squared plus this side squared is this side squared, right? So we would say x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared must be d squared. And then we take the square root on both sides and we get the formula. That all look familiar? But what about in 3D? Well, the formula just changes slightly, but how? Like, where is this coming from? Yeah, let's see if we can't come up. Let's see if we can't at least think through what, how we would get it. Because it's not as simple as this picture is. Everyone clear with this picture, though? OK. So let me now try and derive the formula for distance between two points in three space, in 3D. And we're gonna have to, yeah, something. Let's let's see here. I've got to pick two points. I'm gonna do them in red, and these are just arbitrarily sitting out here. Ah, uh, I don't know. See, it's hard already because where do I put the points? Okay, let's say there and there, and let's connect them with a line, and let's call that D. And I want to know what that D is, right? But this is three-dimensional. Three Any ideas? We need the coordinates for All right, let's label them then. Let's say this first point here, let's call that uh, X1, Y1, Z1. And then we'll call this one over here X2, Y2, Z2. That fair? What you got? Well, why don't you just draw a right triangle like you did before? Okay. You do the same exact thing, except for you'd have uh, X2 minus, or yeah, X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared plus Z2 minus Z1 squared equals D squared. Yes, I agree with that, but sh prove. I mean, you got to convince me of that geometrically. I'm not convinced of that yet. Let me try and draw a right triangle, okay? Is this a fair right triangle to you? Yes? No, I'm going to try and do this a different way. Can I, anyone have a sacrificial piece of paper? Here we go. I'm going to sacrifice this. Okay, I'm going to try and draw this same thing. Here's my right triangle. Here are my two points, okay? These are arbitrary points in three-dimensional space, okay? Here they are. See, they're sitting, they can be sitting anywhere, right? All right, so do you know the length of this side? You do not. Do you know this? Sure. In terms of in terms of your points, do you know this? Yeah, that's Z. What is this? Z2. Z2 minus Z1. Minus Z1. This right here is just the difference between the Z coordinates, right? 
this is no longer just the difference between two things, right? Okay, so here's what I'm about to do. Imagine this picture. I'm going to take this point and this point, and I'm going to project them straight down onto the XY plane, all right? And drop them straight down. It's hard to see if I don't show you that piece. So imagine taking this point, boom, it's gonna hit the XY plane somewhere, right? Then I drop this one down. It's gonna hit the XY plane somewhere like that, right? Y'all okay with that? Now, we said that this side was just the differences between the Z coordinates. Yes, that's just the change in height. But this distance is not. Now, this is pretty cool. Does anyone see what I'm about to do? Do you see the little right triangle I grew, drew on the ground? That's on the ground. And isn't this just back to the formula we just did? This right here, this distance right here is what? x2 minus x1, right? And this distance right here is y2 minus y1, right? And that means this distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? But that distance is actually that right there, isn't it? This right there. That's pretty cool, right? If you see that. So what is the formula for D? It's this side squared, so square this. What do you get? Just drop the root. Just drop the root. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus this side squared. The difference in the z's. And that must equal d squared. Take the square root. And that's d. So the formula. The difference between finding distance between two points in two-dimensional space versus three-dimensional space, the only thing that happens is you add this on, right? But actually figure out why requires a little bit more thought than just throw it in there, right? You actually have to project this down and then come up with the formula. Okay. So if I give you two points, which I'm not going to do, but if I give you two points, you should be able to calculate the distance between them, right? Just plug and chug, just grind out that work. <clears throat> it's warm in here. That's it, right? <laughs> All right, there's, there's our first, our first real kind of important surface in this class, and that's a sphere. Now hopefully you recall already the equation of a circle in R2 is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the equation of a circle that's centered at HK in this case. If, we, if, if you write down this, that's a general equation of a circle that's centered at the origin because H and K are zero. This is the more general one. This will give you the equation of a circle that's, that can be anywhere on the, in R2. Do those look familiar? Mm -hmm. All right, this is the equation of a sphere in three-dimensional space centered at HKL and having a radius R. So it looks very much like the equation of the circle over here, doesn't it? All we're doing is adding an additional Z minus, and then we had to use a letter, so we use L squared equals R squared. So a sphere in three-dimensional space are all points that lie the same distance from some center point. So it's like you start with a center point and you walk out a certain distance in every direction 
all those points together come up with that sphere. So it's hollow inside, right? There's nothing inside that. It's just the surface. Now we can change, we can change the values of h, k, and l. And if we change the values of h, k, and l, it's going to move that sphere around, isn't it? And just move that thing around. I can change my radius. Oh, no, that's not the radius. I can change my radius, right, and then have different perspectives of that sphere. But the most important thing for you to understand is the equation of it. So we're going to do an example now. Find equation of sphere through the point 3, 5, negative 2 with radius of 3. So I want you to find the equation of a sphere that has that center, uh, sorry, that's center, oops with center three five negative two and with a radius of three so is there any real work that we have to do here I mean no, just, plug. just plug in right I've given you what information HKL right given you HKL and I've given you the radius so the equation should just be straightforward. It should be parenthesis, what? X minus 3, X minus three that quantity squared. Y minus five squared. Plus Y minus 5, quantity squared. Plus Z plus 2. Plus Z plus 2, that quantity squared equals 9. nine. OK. So that means that if you give me an X, Y, and a Z right now, right? Give me an X, Y, and a Z. You give it to me? If I plug the x, the y, and the z in here, and I get a true equation, like this side equals that side, the point you, that you gave me lives on that sphere. On the sphere, somewhere on it, right? Any point that satisfy, any x, y, and z that satisfies this equation basically lives on that sphere. So how about the origin? How about 0, 0, 0? Does it live on this sphere? No. No, it doesn't. You can try it. Plug in 0 here, what do you get? 9, 25, 4, add those up, is it 9? No. no. Um, how about, how would you find it? I, mean, I guess you could, you could find one. Someone try and give me one real fast. Try it even faster. You, could maybe, you can't do a system of equations because this is your one equation and you've got multiple variables. Three, three, zero, zero, give me another one. Three, five, negative two. Uh, hold on. Three, this is close. Three, five, zero, five, negative two. Right, zero, five, negative two. Zero, five, negative two. I'm just writing these down. I'm not checking them. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, I messed up on that one. This one's wrong. You want to change it? I was going to say that one, zero, five, negative two. Make this one six. I think that'll work. Okay. Yeah. So think about what you're trying to get. You're trying to get a nine, right? Yeah. So if I could just forget these, right? How do I make this nine? Six. I need to make this a three and then square it, right? So to make this a three, I just need to make the x a six. And then um, I said this would not work. This would have to be five, and this would have to be negative two. So that way, when you plug in 5, it zeroes this out, and you plug in negative 2, and it zeroes this out. Do you all see that? So you could come up with some quick solutions. You all agree? Now, did this one work? Yeah. This one works. 3 kills off the first one, right? 5 kills off this one. 1 in here. 1 plus 2 is 3 squared, 9. That works. So these work. How about this one? Did this one work? Yeah, this one works. Zero into this first one gives you what? 
Negative three squared, that's nine. And then you plug in your five, it's gone. You plug in your negative two, it's gone. And that'll give you nine. So that works also, right? Now we could do this, what, for the rest of our lives. And, and we would die and we would not ever get all the solutions, right? Because there's infinitely many points. But that's one quick way to do it. Um, are any of these points interesting? Can somebody give me a point? <clears throat> all right, let me ask this question. Does this intersect the xy plane? Does it intersect the xy plane? Does that sphere, when you draw it, does it hit the xy plane? Yes. Convin convince me how to approach this. If z is equal to zero. If, uh, so the xy plane means z is zero, right? Yes. Remember how, when we were coming up with these planes? We, if x is zero, you get the yz plane. If y is zero, you get the xz plane. The xy plane means z is zero, right? Z is zero. So let's go up into this equation and let's plug in zero for z. And what would we get? I would get x minus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared. And if that's 0, this is a 4, isn't it? Take it to the other side, and what do you get? 5. And this is the equation of a circle. Does it have solutions? Yes, it does. Right? This is this. Is this. this is the equation of a circle. There's infinitely many solutions. Wait a minute. Hold on. We're saying that this sphere hits the xy plane, and the shape it hits it in is circle. Well, does that make sense? You have a sphere, you cut through it with the plane. Isn't that going to be a circle where it intersects? Yeah. Okay. So this is our, these are our solutions. Any point that you can come up with that would satisfy this would actually be on the xy plane and be part of that sphere also. All right, let me ask you a different question. Does it intersect the y-axis? Yes? Well, what does the y-axis mean? What does it mean if you're on the y-axis in three-dimensional space, x and z both have to be zero? I don't think so, because you get a negative ratio. Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see. To be on the y-axis in three-dimensional space means that x is zero and y is zero. Do you all understand that? Um, hold on. I put x in. I meant to put z. So where's our y-axis in the corner of the room here? It's, it's actually on the floor, right? But it, let's just say it's this one here instead. If I'm anywhere on this, then I can't go anywhere out on x, can I? I can't go anyway. And I can't go up and down to be on the y-axis. So my x and my z have to be 0 here. So if I go back in here and I replace x and z with 0, let's see what we get. If x is 0, you get? 9 plus y minus 5 squared plus, now replace z with 0, and you get 4, and then equals 9. Solve this equation, uh-oh. You get y minus 5 squared equals negative 4, and that is going to be a problem. Because that means that something squared is negative, and that means we need imaginary numbers, and we're not dealing with imaginary numbers. Okay? So this means there's no real solution, no real, real number solution to this, which means that it does not intersect the y-axis. Right? It does not. All right, I want us to do one more. Um, 
I want to find the equation of the sphere with the same center, okay? This time that is tangent to the y z plane. Well, this one's going to be interesting. This one's not hard. It's just you're trying to visualize something right now, and you know you're trying to practice thinking three-dimensionally. The sphere is tangent to a, point, to a plane, right? So I need to make sure that you understand what I mean by that. If I have a sphere, right, and here's a plane, when I say tangent, that means it just touches it, okay? Just touches it. Yeah, like this. No, no, the center is here, the center is there, right? So the center is sitting, let me actually walk out to the center. Let me see here. Three, right? Three, walk out three, one, two, three, over here. Walk out five on the Y, and then down two, right? So I've got this center of the sphere is below the floor over here somewhere. And I want to know the equation of that sphere, but it needs to touch this wall. So that, that sphere comes out, right, and just touches this wall like this. Yes? Nope, you don't have to work that hard for it. Okay. Yeah, don't overthink it. Let me ask you this. What do you need to write down the equation of a sphere? What, are the, what is the information that you need to give me the equation of a sphere? Center and a radius. You have what? Center. You already have the center. So all you need is what? The radius. The radius. Okay, so let's act like, let's just act for the sake of, of, of making it easy. Let's act like the camera is the center of the this, of this sphere right now. Okay, that's the camera. With the radius from so How far is that camera from this plane? Three. It's the x distance, very good. So would it be Isn't, to get out, to, let's, let's go through this. To get out to that point, we have to go out an x, Three. over a y, and up or down a z, right? Three. And if I'm trying to get to this plane, to be tangent, the only thing that matters is the x distance from here to there. So what is that x distance? Three. Three. And so the radius needs to be? Nine. Nine. Right? The for, in the formula, sorry, the radius squared, that, that thing needs to be nine. Let's write down the equation. It's x minus three squared plus y minus five squared plus z plus 2 squared equals what? 9. The radius is 3. The radius of this sphere is 3. Now I'm going to make a very, very horrible attempt at this picture. Okay, so I walked out 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I went down 1, 2. So that put me here. And I have a radius of 3. So down there, a radius of 3 goes back this way. If I draw that, if I draw that sphere in there, down there, so it's down below a little bit, that would just touch the yz plane. It would be tangent. Again, hard to do, hard to draw. But what, how could I change this problem to make it a little different? I could make that what? Instead of touching yz, I could try something like xy or there's three different things we could do, right? Am I out of time? No, I have, I have a little bit of time. Just enough time to, to wrap up the last few things. <clears throat> You'll get to play with this in your homework, all right? You know how I started out the class? With, with this idea, and I said, you know, let's, let's write x equals 2 and let's figure out what it looks like, right? How about this? X, x equals 2, x equals 2 is a plane that is parallel 
to the yz plane. You all hear that? x equals 2 is a plane that is parallel to the yz plane. We looked at it earlier. What is that, though? Yeah, it's a, a plane that's parallel to the yz plane, and then every plane out past 2. It's like an infinite volume. Yes, we actually call this a half space. This is a half space, even though it's not technically half. Right? It's, it is. So it's uh, coming out here. Walk out two units. There's this wall, right? Infinite wall. And then just solid the rest of the way. So that's what we're looking at. So this is called a half space. I just want you to know like the terminology. OK, how about this? Change it up a little bit. Ooh, that one's tricky. So it would go, so, not a wall. so would there be a wall behind? Or would it be, a, or would it be just like a straight, like a straight line going from Zero to two, and then a wall going out infinitely from two. We're not going to go well infinitely. What is, I heard? What chunk? What? Yes, yeah, this is like a chunk of space. Um, it's like an infinite chunk of three-dimensional space, like this. Okay. Let me try. Let me try and illustrate this a little different. If we were in two-dimensional space. It would look like this. Here's 2, right? It would be everything between 0 and 2. It would include 2, wouldn't it? Yes. So it'd be, it would include this vertical line. But it would not include 0, so it would be dashed like that. That's what it would be in two-dimensional space. In three-dimensional space, you also have this depth to it. So it's this right here. But the, the thing that's interesting is that this edge of this wall, solid line, is part of your solution. And on the other side of this slab, it's dotted. It's like infinitely close. You can get infinitely close to zero without getting to zero. So it's weird. This starts to be weird, isn't it? OK. But it's just, I mean, we just have to be thinking three-dimensionally here. Uh, what about this? Start with that. What's that? In three-dimensional space, what's, uh, I forgot to put, sorry, forgot to put plus z squared. Um, that would be a what? Sphere. That would be a sphere so would radius you, three, right? What would you call that? Zero. Um, different books call it different things. I, I don't even know. Kind of just call it a chunk of space. Call it a chunk of space. In the, in the book, they just want you to, like in words, try and explain what it is. I'm not going to test you on that. I just want you to be thinking about what do these inequalities mean in three-dimensional space, right? All right, that right there, that is the equation of a sphere, isn't it? Sphere? Radius? Three. So it's that outer shell, isn't it? Okay, what about this? Less than or equal to nine. That's the sphere and everything in it. Because that means it has a radius of 9, doesn't it? But it also has a radius of 8 and a radius of 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and every number between 8 and 9. So it's all the spheres with radius 9 and down. This is a solid ball, isn't it? It's a solid ball. Centered where? At the origin, solid ball going out. What about this? That's a ball with, this is a coconut. You've got an outer shell, solid through, hollow on the inside, right? Radius of two on the inside. So if you look at, if you're standing at the origin, from zero out to two, there's nothing. Then you have a shell, then it's solid, all the way to you get a radius of nine, and then the outer shell, and then, you, can you see it, kind of? Mm -hmm. So what if I did this? What if I said this and, with z less than or equal to 0. I'm only doing this because it's going to be easier for me to draw this. It's like a dome. It's on the bottom 
it's only the bottom of that picture, right? So it'd be like this. It's something like that. That's your coconut. I've just cut it in half. So your z being less than or equal to zero means you can't have a, a top piece to it. It can only be the bottom. Like an avocado. Avocado, <laughs> yeah, if you like. Okay, now I put this up. I'm out of time, but I put this up earlier, and I, I, I kind of act like I messed up, but what is that? That's the equation of a circle, right? But in three-dimensional space, I should have the homework. Oh, uh, where's the homework? It's not there. I'll email you the homework as soon as I get to my office, the homework problems from this section. You're free to go. Homework is not turned in. Just keep it together. Are you going to check it like a portfolio? I won't check it. I won't check it. But I recommend you do it. Um, now, I could give you a quiz over homework, you know? I mean, it could be like, here's a problem from your homework, or it could be, let me see your homework. Are we going to use multiple of these with the homework? Or? For this homework, you might, you might use multiple of those. You can print some. I would look at the homework first. Hey, this is a circle radius 3, right? But your z coordinate is free. Right? Your z is free. So in three-dimensional, it's this circle on the ground, right? But its z can be free, so it actually creates a cylinder. And it's infinite, an infinite cylinder. All right, we're headed that way. Y'all have a good day. Sorry I went over on the first day, but I started late.